I'm sure all of us, at one time or another, has heard of the term acid rain. Acid rain is one form of acid precipitation or deposition. It can also be in the form of other wet depositions, such as snow and sleet, or dry deposition, such as acid fog. We'll get into what causes acid deposition in a moment, but first, know that it can have a devastating effect to local ecosystems as seen here. Throughout this pre-lab lecture, you may hear me refer to acid rain, acid precipitation, and acid deposition. For this lecture, we just keep in mind that with all three of these terms, I'm talking about the same thing. So what is acid deposition? In order to better understand this concept, we first have to talk a bit about acids and bases. This is not a chemistry class, so I will try to explain this to you in the simplest terms. An acid is a molecule that has a hydrogen attached. Hydrogen is a unique element. It's the smallest and least dense and has one proton and one electron. It connects to a compound by sharing its electron with the molecule. The hydrogen ion is highly reactive and when we mix it with water, it does what we call dissociate. The hydrogen ion is given up during dissociation and brings with it a positive charge. For this reason, it is often termed a proton donor and you will see that it donates an H+, okay, which is our hydrogen ion. Now we categorize acids into two categories strong acids and weak acids. The determination of which category an acid belongs uh, is determined by how much of the acid disassociate, dissociates in water. Strong acids completely dissociate in water as shown in this clip. In this lesson, we will concentrate on strong acids of sulfuric acid and nitric acid. Weak acids partially dissociate in water. Some of the hydrogen ionizes, but some of the hydrogen stays connected to the acid molecule. The weak acid we will look at in this lab is carbonic acid. Bases are molecules that have a hydroxide ion. That's this OH here. This is an oxygen and a hydrogen that are bonded together. Very similar to acids, bases dissociate in water. Instead of just releasing the hydrogen ion alone, it actually releases this whole hydroxide ion. These carry a negative charge and are known as proton acceptors. We will look at the pH scale more in depth in video two, but for now, let's look at where acids and bases fall on this scale. It runs from zero to 14. You can see that all acids fall below seven, while all bases are above seven. At the pH of 7, solutions are considered neutral. This brings us to the concept of buffers. Let's say we have a solution with a pH of 3. This is acidic. A buffer can be used to bring the pH to a more neutral state. 